This video is about very accurately timing and time stamping events on an FPGA. I'll show this on a Tang Nano 9K FPGA development board, but the project also supports the Tang Nano 20K. This is the first video in a series of at least two. What problem are we solving? Suppose you want to know the time between events defined by the rising edge of a signal. Simple, just implement a counter with some reasonable frequency, like 100 MHz, and capture its value when the event happens. But there are problems. Your 100 MHz counter frequency is probably derived from a crystal oscillator like the one on the Tang Nano boards. These aren't exact. Their frequency won't even be constant. It can vary with temperature and even the age of the crystal. We can do better by driving the counter with a clock that we can adjust very precisely. To make it accurate, we could select the adjustment using the pulse per second output of a GPS receiver. These are pretty accurate, even on cheap GPS modules available from Amazon. But in this video, we'll focus only on the adjustable counter clock. We will show how to build it, it's very simple, and then use it to adjust the frequency of a 1 kHz output signal by 1 hundredth of a hertz. That's a 10 part per million change, and is the smallest change my oscilloscope can measure. In the next video, we'll integrate the design with a RISC-V core and use a GPS to make the adjustments under software control. We will see adjustments happen that correct for input clock frequency changes caused by temperature changes of only a couple degrees C. Here's the design. I want to mention that I did not invent this. I've seen similar things integrated on microprocessor SOCs to improve the accuracy of the precision time protocol on Ethernet. I wanted to try using this for more general purposes using a cheap GPS receiver along with my FPGA. Anyway, the heart of the design is the accumulator counter. It's what allows the frequency of the other counters to be adjusted. It and the other counters are driven by the same clock, clock PPS. I'm using 120 megahertz on the Tang Nano 9K. The key is that the other counters only increment when the carry bit from the accumulator counter is set. It's easy to see how this works. The accumulator counter itself is incremented by the number in acum incur at 120 megahertz. Suppose acum incur is hex 8000000, that's 8 followed by 7 zeros. The carry bit will be set every other cycle, so the other clocks will count at 60 megahertz instead of 120 megahertz. If acum incur is hex 4 followed by 7 zeros, the carry bit is set every fourth clock so the other counters count at 30 MHz. If a cum inker is hex FFFFFFFF, the other clocks will count at just barely below 120 MHz. So, we can adjust the frequency of the other counters by adjusting a cum inker. But, to get a particular counting rate, exactly how do we choose a cum inker? We use the formula shown. In our implementation, both a cum counter and a cum inker are 32 bits. If clock PPS is 120 MHz, and we want the other counters to count at 100 MHz, we compute a value of a cum inker of hex D5555555. But suppose we want to make a tiny adjustment to that 100 MHz, perhaps to compensate for clock PPS not being exactly 120 MHz. Well, use the formula to compute 100.00001 MHz. The new a cum inker is hex D5555 56BB. So you see, a cum inker allows very precise adjustment. But there's a downside. The carry bit is set sometimes and not set other times. It means the other counters have jitter in their counting. This matters little if your goal is to timestamp events that are pretty far apart in time. The jitter might cause timestamps to be off 10 or 20 nanoseconds. That's a small fraction of, say, one second. This is part of the reason why things like GPS use 1 pulse per second timing signals. 20 nanoseconds is a small fraction of 1 second. Our demonstration today focuses on this part of the design. We'll set a cum inker to make the counters count at near 100 MHz. So, in particular, the PPS counter counter will be counting at near 100 MHz. It drives an output signal we can examine on a scope. The PPS count value controls the frequency of the signal we'll see. We'll set the PPS count to 100,000 in order to see a 1 kHz signal on the scope. We will then adjust it by 1 hundredth of a hertz by adjusting a cum inker. Let's look at some Verilog and then see this in action. Here's the Goen IDE. We can see the version here. 
and we have the project file for the Tang Nano 9K open. Let's start by looking at pps.v. And so if we scroll down a little bit, we'll see this always block here. And so you can see this line here is what causes the accumulator counter to be incremented by accumulator incur every clock PPS cycle. And this is the way that the carry bit is captured as part of the add. And then down below here, if the carry bit is true, we increment the other counters. So in particular, time counter gets incremented by time incur. We're going to use this counter in the next video. And here, PPS counter is counting from one to PPS count. And down here, this controls the output signal that we're going to look at on the oscilloscope. And so this causes it to be high with a duty cycle of approximately 25% by setting PPS pulse out to one um, whenever PPS counter is less than PPS count shifted by two bits. And then down here, uh, we're using the button two signal to select between four hardwired values for a Q-Minker. And so this little loop here just causes um, a inker cell to be cyclically incremented by one every time button two is pressed. And then that determines which value is used for a Q minker. Now let's look at the top level module. So we'll open it. And up at the top, these are the signals going off the FPGA. So our clock in is the 27 megahertz clock signal from the oscillator on the board. And we're going to use a Goen RPLL to convert that to the 120 megahertz clock PPS signal. We have a reset button and then the button two that we use to select the different hardwired values for a Q-Minker. Uh, PPS in is a, something we'll use in the next video. And TS-63 is here just to prevent the, the time, time inker counter and the time stamping of it to be optimized out of the design. Even though we're not using it today, I didn't want it to be optimized out. LEDs shows the shows which a Q minker value is currently in use. So the LEDs show either 0, 1, 2, or 3. And PPS pulse out is the signal that we're going to examine on the oscilloscope. So it's the one that should be nearly 1 kilohertz. And down here we have the four values of a Q minker that are selected by the button two. And so this first one is, is set to a nominal value. And so that would cause the output signal to be ex exactly one kilohertz if the clocks on the Tang Nano board and my oscilloscope agree. So that probably won't be true. So when we come out of reset, we'll, the oscilloscope will measure a frequency very nearly one kilohertz, but we can compute other values of a cum inker to make the oscilloscope display the frequencies that we want to see. And so this first one would be calculated to show, to cause the oscilloscope to display one kilohertz exactly. This next one is calculated to cause the oscilloscope to show 1.00001 kilohertz. And the next one 1.0002 kilohertz. And in that way, we can see how changing a cum inker can cause very small changes in the rate at which the PPS counter counts. And notice here, we're setting PPS count to 100,000. PPS count is going to be counting, you know, at, at around 100 megahertz. And so dividing by 100,000 is what causes it to show one kilohertz. And then down here, we have some reset control, some things to convert button presses and stuff into single cycles, which is good for the design. Here we instantiate the PPS timer and somewhere there will be the PLL that I mentioned. So that's the top level module. They're very similar for the Tang Nano 9K and the Tang Nano 20K boards. So now we can build and run. So we'll do both here. And it's a small project, so it'll build quickly. And then we can load it onto the FPGA, and sometimes you need to do this to make it detect the FPGA. So now we load it, and now it's running. So we can go to the oscilloscope and see what we can see. And what we see is that the oscilloscope is measuring a frequency of 1.00001 kilohertz. And so now we need to compute some new values for a Q-Minker that will cause it to display the desired frequencies, starting with one kilohertz exactly. 
And for this, I've written a program to help with the computation. It's over here, just called Compute Acume Inker. So I'll build that. And then we need to run it. And we pass as a parameter the frequency that we measured. So 1.00001. And then it computes the values of Acume Inker that we need using the formula from before. So the first one goes here. So like that. And then the second one goes here. Second one is the one that's going to display this frequency, the 1.00001. And then the third will go here. And I don't want that E. And there we go. So we save that and uh, rebuild again, and we'll reload, and we'll cut to what this looks like. And we're back with the nominal accumulator inker value still giving us 1.00001 kilohertz. But now if I press the button once, we should go to the first setting, and it should be one kilohertz exactly, and it is. If I press the button a second time, it should go to 1.00001. Again, it did it. If I press the button a third time, we should see 1.00002. So we're making very small adjustments to the frequency with which the PPS counter counts by adjusting a Q-Minker. If I go back one more time, we'll be back to the nominal frequency and then the one kilohertz exactly. So it's working well. This video demonstrated how to implement counters whose counting rate can be very precisely adjusted by changing a Q-Minker. In the next video, we will add accuracy to precision by integrating these counters with a Pico RV32 RISC-V core and using a GPS receiver with a pulse per second output. We'll use a feedback loop that measures the PPS signal from the GPS and uses it to adjust a QM inker so that the counters count at a rate determined by the GPS receiver. As always, see below for a GitHub link to the files for this project. I'll end the video here. Thanks for watching.